I've removed the reflector. Um, that was its mount because that's not needed. There's a panel type LED display, little chip thing. Um, so there's no possibility of using a reflector. Um, we have in here actually a heat sink to which the uh, little LED unit is attached. If the projector does need to be taken apart, there are just four screws, one in each corner. And then as you lift the bottom up, the doors and things will fall off. So just check that you understand where the, how the door um, and other pieces fit before you actually take it apart. I've taken the two halves apart so you can now see the area where the lamp is. So this is the heat sink. I made a, an aluminium plate to fit that to. And that aluminium plate is fitted to the metal piece that used to hold the reflector which of course we no longer need. If I lift up this shutter here, you can just see the chip inside there. The LED chip. These slots are for holding the condensers. So there are condenser lenses in there and you have to remember which way they were in and take them out before you take the machine apart or they'll fall out. Okay, so there are two condenser lenses. Also, there's a slot which could hold a heat filter glass. You don't need that. The LED is, is so cool in comparison to the old halogen lamps that you really don't need that. So if there's one in there, you can leave it out. So you can see here where I've taken the low voltage line and that goes out to the driver that's going to be stuck on the front of the machine. So it's a straightforward power line and then low voltage line straight to the LED. So switching is done on a separate external switch that we have to organize and arrange. And the rest of it, basically all that I did was I cut off the lead, the wire, that originally went to the tungsten halogen lamp and I've put little heat shrink pieces on there to isolate them and tied that down with a nylon tie. So if someone wanted to reinstate halogen I've no idea why you'd ever want to do that but if you did um, that's entirely possible. That's what I've done and I'll now show you the components. So here are some of the things you need. With that little chip. In this case I've used a 10 watt equivalent to maybe an 80 or 90 watt halogen lamp and as you can see there's a minus and a plus and you do have to get the polarity right when you're soldering the black and red wires onto these two lugs. And then You have to screw that to two holes that you've made. Screw holes, two holes that you've made in this heat sink. And underneath the chip, or rather between the chip and the heat sink, you have to put some white thermal grease, it's usually white in this little tube. A tiny bit of that just spread around, it's like toothpaste, and then the chip on top. That conducts the heat from the LED unit into the heat sink, and the heat sink looks like this. Aluminium, black coated, available on eBay, cheap enough. So that takes, that's big enough really to take the heat away from that little LED chip without the requirement for a fan. But of course, 
the projector does still have a fan which as you switch the projector on although obviously your old halogen supply has been disconnected if you do what I did um, the fan will still run so you've got some cooling there and that's more than enough I would say so that's the main work that's involved and obviously you know you'll need to fit this to something that holds it in the right position very central to the condensers and the aperture for the slide so so that the light is evenly centered I'll be fixing the little driver unit to the outside of the machine because there's no um, reason why it shouldn't be there. It's not going to get in the way. It'll be fixed there. It was just too tight to put it inside, really. And then the uh, low voltage supply goes through the aperture allowed for the lens. And then there is actually a separate mains lead which will be attached there just for the light. That was the easiest way to arrange this. Here's the halogen lamp unit that I removed. Unlikely I'll have any future use for that. And the carousel tray takes 80 slides for those who aren't familiar with it. So when the last one finishes it's back to the beginning. There were other projectors that used the carousel type system. The Hanimex, the La Ronde and others but this was the most reliable and um, it's pretty straightforward putting the slides on and off although there is a technique to uh, loading the slides and making sure that the carousel tray doesn't jam I'll go into that at the end just in case someone wants to use a carousel and, and hasn't done so in the past so this is the carousel tray that noise you can hear is the fan from the projector because we have the lamp on. That's because we now have the new second lead for the lamp supply. So when you've got slides in your tray, and remember they go in upside down, starting here, number one obviously, and as many as you want up to 80. Now what you then do, and this is quite important, is make sure that the top is on securely and turn the tray over and then just move it around. And if this is if this section is movable before you put your slide tray into the projector, slide this around. You heard that click. If it's not in the right position, it will then move to the right position. So make sure it's clicked, then make sure that you've still got your hand on the plastic top. Turn it back over. Look for where the zero is. And move that around just loosely and you'll hear it click into place. And that's now ready to go. So we're on zero at the moment. And we now have our first slide. Press the button. It goes to slide number two. And so on. Backwards, forwards. And with vertical format, concentrate format, as well as horizontal. If you don't want to, or you're not able to use the buttons to go forwards and backwards, then 
there's a socket here for an extension lead with a little clicker on it. Alternatively, you can you can plug into that socket a little timing unit. If you can find one, they're very difficult to find now. But it's an automatic timing unit with a seconds control on it. So you, this will turn over automatically, and that's the plan for this one, which will be in a display cabinet in a museum, that it will click and change automatically. Because it's now an LED lamp, the lamp will last for much, much longer than the old halogen lamp would have lasted, and the whole thing will be much less hot. So the slides don't get heated up, so you can have a particular slide on for a long period of time. Um, in normal projection in the old days using the halogen lamp it was actually pretty reliable. I've run a setup with nine of these machines together running a program alternately in different configurations seven days a week, ten hours a day for years and the main problem was the slides would eventually fade and you needed to replace the slides. Obviously occasionally a bulb will blow. So um, this will be even more reliable. The carousel projectors are normally fitted with a zoom lens. Pretty good useful zoom range on this one. But you do need to refocus after zooming. And this is intended to give a small screen picture inside a display cabinet so the 10 watt LED is plenty bright enough for that and for lots of other applications too. If you need a brighter lamp it may well be possible to fit say a 30 watt LED in place of the 10 watt with the suitable 30 watt driver and I think probably the same heatsink would be okay, providing that you've still got the fan going, and as you can hear, we do still have the fan going. So there we are, still a very useful machine, the Kodak Carousel Projector 35mm slides. I would recommend the use of plastic slide mounts for any kind of long-term use in a display situation. The cardboard ones can get bent. And the other thing is that these are glass-mounted there's thin glass either side of the 35mm transparency and that keeps the image flat stops the film from curling over time dissipates the heat a little bit, not that there's any here and keeps them clean, they're much easier to clean you can take these out and clean them off with a cleaning tissue without worrying about abrading the um, emulsion on the film if there's text on there you should be able to read it correctly and then upside down and then in and then it's the right way around and the right way up. To remove the carousel tray you just need to pull a little lever in there, you can see that working and then lift it out and if you do that when you haven't zeroed it you'll leave a slide in there so make sure you check the projector in case you've done that otherwise you'll be leaving one of your slides behind so Kodak Carousel SAV2000 there were lots of different models of the um, carousel range this was a good one most of them were and now it just needs me to clean it up and it's ready for use